example, Rana Ambrose, eh? The woman becomes the minister of the environment in a government that says right off the top that the environment is not a priority. She does exactly what she's told, which is basically nothing, and then she gets the slap for it. But make no mistake about it, the rise and fall of Rana Ambrose says very little about Rana's abilities and everything about the prime minister. Because Stephen Harper, he made it clear from day one. He's the head coach here. He put Rana in the game. He called the play. It went badly. She took the blame. But of course, for Harper, a blaming wasn't good enough. Oh, no, he arranged for her to have a good old-fashioned shaming. Because the one thing you can say about the Harper government is this. Leaks never happen. If there is a leak, it is always intentional. So when word got out that poor old Rana was on death watch, you can be guaranteed that came directly from head office. And Harper, he got to sit back over the holidays for five weeks, put up his feet and read 2,000 articles that said Rana was about to be fired for total incompetence. You know, this represents a new style in Canadian politics. Chrétien, Mulroney, they would crawl over broken glass to protect a cabinet minister. Whereas Harper, he takes a different approach. He takes the angry, disappointed dad with a penchant for lashing out approach. And let's face it, everyone wants one of those. And now, thanks to what happened to Rana, every single cabinet minister has the message loud and clear. When things go well, dad takes the credit. When things go bad, you take the blame. You know, there's a word for that kind of behavior, but you're not allowed to say it on TV.